the teaching of eternal torment actually started creeping in into Judaism um, a little bit before the time of Christ, not through any of the Old Testament prophets, but through Egyptian and pagan sources. And so uh, you were, you did have, um, you know, some of the some of the Jewish leaders at the time, some of the rabbis at the time around the first century, um, who did embrace this idea of like the enemies of God, those who reject faith in God, that God's going to uh, punish them forever. And so, but again, it didn't creep in through any of the prophets, any of the Old Testament scriptures. It crept in through pagan sources, number one. And number two, um, again, just doing some research into early church history, realizing that a lot of the Pharisees embraced this idea of eternal torment. And then I go, does it make any sense that Jesus would have like agreed with the Pharisees on something like that, where it didn't even come through the prophets? If anything, it seems that Jesus was uh, rebuking the Pharisees for not, you know, uh, having a faithfulness to the Old Testament prophet and Old Testament scriptures uh, in truth. And so that's another thing that I kind of go, huh, well, what's that all about? And then the other thing, you know, I, I said this myself forever. I just repeated it because I was told this, right? Um, no one talks more about hell in the Bible than Jesus. And I used to tell people that. I believe that. Well, then I realized, like, well, actually, when you go and look at all of those scriptures that supposedly teach eternal torment from the mouth of Jesus, uh, it's like, you know what? No, none of those things. Jesus isn't talking about where anybody goes after they die. And in fact, when Jesus uses these phrases uh, like, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, or there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, or the smoke of the torment rises forever and ever, or any of those kinds of things. Here's the crazy thing. He's quoting Old Testament prophets when he does that. He's quoting uh, almost verbatim sometimes things that Jeremiah has said, or Isaiah has said, or Hosea, or some of the Amos, or some of the other Old Testament prophets. And again, none of those guys were talking about eternal conscious torment. So when Jesus, I mean, it seems like, oh, right here, Jesus said something. It looks like uh, what he's saying is in this verse is that people are going to burn in hell forever. But what he's doing is he's using apocalyptic hyperbole. So to the ears of those first century Jewish disciples, right, those standing around listening to him use those kinds of phrases, when he uses those phrases, they go, oh, okay, he's, he's quoting Jeremiah right now. Oh, he's referring to when, um, you know, some of the prophets were speaking a word of warning against Edom or Egypt or Midia or uh, perhaps even or Babylon or sometimes, sometimes even Jerusalem. Um, it's this apocalyptic hyperbole to sort of overstate um, this destruction that may be coming upon them if they don't, you know, change what they're doing and, and you know, return to, to God. And so that's why he uses these phrases like the stars falling from the sky and the sky being rolled up like a scroll. Again, those are the exact same phrases that Jeremiah, Amos, you know, Isaiah, all these guys use, Ezekiel, to warn these other nations about some destruction that's coming upon them. So again, if we don't know that, we just read it straight like, oh, Jesus is talking about something that's really going to happen to people after they die. They're going to have, they're going to experience this eternal kind of torment. When that's not what he's referring to at all. He's actually just quoting uh, the same kind of language to warn, uh, you know, people standing there in Jerusalem that, hey, in about 40 years, if you don't stop resisting the Romans and if you don't stop seeking sort of this violent overthrow of your oppressors, it's going to lead to this ultimate destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, the end of the Jewish priesthood, the end of the sacrificial system, and it's basically going to be game over for you guys. So that's why he's using this kind of apocalyptic hyperbole. It's like, it's not the end of the world. In fact, he doesn't even use that phrase. He uses the end of the age. And so, it, and, and that did happen, right? So um, I think, again, if you take the time, and I do this in my book, I try to go through just every single verse that people have used to say, well, here Jesus is talking about eternal torment. And when you do, and you compare it to Old Testament passages, and you look also again at like what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, I think what you really see is that's what he's talking about. It's not where anyone goes after they die. It has nothing to do with anybody's post-mortem state at all. Um, that's why I really think that eternal conscious torment has, I think, very weak, very uh, flimsy scriptural evidence when you really dig down and, and look at it.